OK, so that's two ways we can fire a queue. We can either fire it using the Go button, or we can set them to either Auto Follow On or Auto Continue, one being a straight follow on, so it fires at exactly the same point as the previous queue, uh, or one to follow on uh, directly after the queue's finished. As well as for sound effects, you can use that particular follow on if you had, say, maybe three tracks, three tracks of pre-show music or something like that that you wanted to kind of loop and get them to follow on one after another so the operator didn't have to keep queuing up tracks every time one track ran out. And on that note, what we're going to do now is we're going to look at a little tool that is used for organising uh, queues. Called, it's called the group queue, but it's not. It's, it's, it's kind of not really so much of a queue. It actually can be fired as a queue, but it's more of a container. So over here in the uh, toolbox, you can see group at the top of the list of my toolbox. I'm going to drag a group queue. I'm just going to drag it to the top of this queue list here. And what you can see there, it's like a little folder. And that gives you a bit of an idea as to what a group queue actually does. Now, if I were to drag all of my tracks from this particular that we've got so far into the group queue, you can see that uh, 0 0.5 is this group. I can give it a name. I don't know. Let's just call it group 1. So that's the first group. And what you've done now, what I've done now is I've dragged all of those queues into the group. And I can also close the group. So the group queue can be used as a way of kind of organizing queues into buckets. But it's not just a question of turning it into a folder which can be uh, minimized on the screen. The group queue can be actually faded up and down independently. So a group's uh, a, a, a fade queue can be targeted to a particular group. Uh, and also you can set the uh, group to either behave in a normal queue list way, in which case, like it is at the moment, uh, all of our, I'll just take that follow one off, all of our queues just fire consecutively one after another on a go press, or we can change the parameters of queue to do something else. So when you select the group queue, you've got the info panel down here and the usual first set of controls there. Again, the trigger panel we don't worry about too much. This panel on the group queue is the mode, and there's four modes here. Now, sometimes the writing on what's written next to these particular modes can be a bit confusing at first, uh, but basically the first one it's set to at the moment makes the group queue behave um, almost as if it wasn't there. So uh, the group queue just uh, goes to the first queue in the group and then waits for a further instruction. So, so that's kind of uh, th that's the sort of default position that we're used to with our queues. The one down here, which is called fire all children simultaneously, so that's children being the queues that are within a group. I don't know whether, you know, it seems pretty obvious. If fire all children simultaneously basically means that they all go at once. So if you had a lot of effects that you needed to happen at once, and they were some of them were looping and maybe some of them weren't, but you needed them all to go together, it could you could just put them all into a group queue and set them like that. So now, if we just reset this uh, set of group, set of queues, you can see as I've reset, all because they're going to all fire together, all of these queues have loaded. Now, when they're loaded, they've got this little yellow dot next to them and the first queue and where we are in the queue list is this black teardrop. So now I'm going to hit go and you can see look the group queue has basically fired all together and all of the effects are firing one after another. So that's one use for the group. Uh, you can use it as a sort of a container so maybe some people like to put their different queues for a scene into a different group if you had a particular show which had a lot of different parts to it that you weren't necessarily sure of the order, for instance a multiple act show or whatever, if they had a lot of cues within each for, for each act, you could always group all of their cues into uh, one group, uh, which would mean that if they changed the running order, you could just pick up the group uh, and move it to a different order in the show. So you could call uh, your group the name of the act or the name of the particular piece that was coming up, um, and then if they change the order of the show, you could just drag your drag drag your group into the into the new order. So, so that's the group queue, uh, a way of organising queues and also uh, organising the way that follow-ons happen and stuff. When I mentioned earlier the idea of being able to run a number of pre-show tracks uh, in one group and looping them, what we could do is we could uh, run say one or two or three tracks one after another, so autom to automatically follow on into each each track. 
and then we could loop that to the back to the start of the group and we could then loop it again uh, all the way to the bottom and then back to the start and then what we could do for the next queue which would be eff effectively the top of the show we could then set a fade queue to fade the entire group and so some, that brings us neatly on to fade queues. Okay what I've got I've just set up here is my first group has got a number of sounds in it it's got our storm loop it's got some ghostly creaks and also some thunder and rain so all those are going to fire simultaneously and they're all set to loop you can see under the action they're all slightly different times but they'll just keep going around and around and create a sound bed for our other cues to fire on top of so let's just have a quick listen to that So we've got our storm thunder going, we've got our ghostly creaks going, and we've also got our thunder and rain going. Now, the next go is going to be the knocking on the door. And the final cue is going to be the creaking door opening. So that's okay. So what I want to create now is I want to, at the end of our show, we've had these two effects, and at the end of our little mini show, I want this sound bed that's looping at the moment to fade out. So what I'm going to do to, to affect that is I'm going to create a fade queue, which is underneath the audio queue in my toolbox. I'm just going to drag it into the bottom of the queue list. So when you drag a queue in, you can see this blue uh, line appears to show you where you're going to insert it in the list. So I'm going to drag that to the bottom of the list. And again, with the fade queue, we can see this queue does not have a target queue. So if you remember, the red crossing queue lab means that something's the matter. And this particular thing that's the matter is that this fade queue doesn't have a target queue. So what I'm going to do is that where it says drag an audio queue, I'm going to grab hold of the group, so the top line here, and I'm going to drag it on top of the fade queue. And you can see here it just says it's adding group 1 there. And if I let go, so the target is now a group group 1. So that's fading group 1. Now the red box, the red cross is still here. And now it says no fade levels have been activated. And what that means is, is that you see again if you go to our uh, panel, our inspector panel, we have our info. Again, the same things again. We have triggers and we have some time. So here we have a curve settings and duration. So these are basically different settings for the way the fade happens. I'm going to leave them as they're set as they are and I'm just going to change the time to three seconds. So it's going to fade over three seconds. And what I'm also going to do for here as well is I'm going to check this box that says stop target when done. And what that will do is it will basically mean that when the queue has finished fading it's going to stop all of the group one queues so they don't keep running. Because if that wasn't checked, what would happen is that the queues would keep running, uh, they would just be faded out. Now there might be reasons why you want to do that, but in this case it's the end of my show. So I just want to stop those queues. If you had a very long uh, piece of media at the start of a show and you didn't stop it, uh, and then you had another one and you didn't stop that, by the time you performed about four fade queues, the Mac would be running a lot of queues that no one was ever going to hear again. So stop target when done as a very important checkbox. Wow, now it told us that uh, there were no fade levels have been activated. So, if we go to the levels tab, when the levels, uh, the faders are greyed out in the in QLab, it basically means they're not having any effect on the actual uh, queue itself. So, this fade queue basically hasn't had any fade levels activated. And if I click it, you'll see it will go yellow. So, now I've clicked it, it's actually doing something. So what I want to do is I want it to fade out, so I'm going to set it to minus infinity, and now the red cross has gone away. And I'm just going to give it a name, and I'm going to go fade weather. I'm going to call it weather. Okay, so let's just reset the queue, and we're going to play the whole thing again. So the first thing that's going to happen in our show is this, you know, people are going to walk in, so it's going to have the sound bed's going to start. So the sound bed's going, and that's quite happy. Now our next cue is going to be our knocking on the door. Now building up quite a head of steam on the uh, effects front, there's quite a lot going on. 
So let's imagine we've got to the next part of our show and we just need our creaking door to open. So I'm going to fire those and I'm going to wait till they've both finished because I want you to see the fade on the group view. So a few more seconds now, another five or six seconds now, and the two pews knocking on door and the creaking door will have finished. Now you see they've both finished and we're left with our looped weather and effects cues. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit the next cue. Let's wait till the that's it, some real level picking up now in these cues. So now I'm going to hit the next cue, and you can see it going, and it's gone. So over five seconds, the weather faded, and the group, all the all the group cues went, and they all finished. So that's how you create a fade cue to fade out our background uh, soundscape for the uh, weather. What we could do is if we wanted to fade in something, we would put the fade cue in after the thing we wanted to fade it, but we need to treat it slightly differently. So, for instance, if I was going to fade in the knocking on the door cue, what I'd need to do is I'd need the knocking on the door cue to go before the fade, because the track needs to start before the fade. So I've just uh, dragged in my fade cue just afterwards. Obviously, I need to give it a target, so I'm dragging the knocking on the door effect over that fade cue and then I'm going to animate the uh, cue itself. So I animate the, uh, animate the volume on that, which is basically a level fade. So I'm just going to call that fade up door. Now when the cue starts, the knocking on the door starts, I need it to start at in minus infinity, because otherwise we'll hear it going. And then what I want it to do is over however many seconds I need it to fade up. So, let's just have a quick listen to that. Let's just run our sound bed. What I want to do now is I want to just run the knocking on door cue. So it's happening, but we can't hear it. So I'm going to fade it up now. There we are, and so we've faded up our knocking on the door cue. And then we have our creaking door go. And we're going to fade out our weather. So you can see over five seconds our weather's fading out. Because the other two cues haven't finished yet, they're still running. What we could do is if we could also, if we wanted to fade everything out altogether, we could create another couple of fade cues. So one fade cue for the knocking on the door. We can fade that out to zero. And we could also fade out the creaking door, so another fade cue again. I'm not going to label these up. But basically that's what they're going to be, and that's going to be there. And then we're going to put the whole lot into a group queue. Okay, and then we're going to set this group to fire all simultaneously. And now, if we fire everything together, first queue's looping, second queue's going, it's starting to fade up. The final queue is now running. And we'll fire off our final set of fade cues. Which take out the whole thing. Now what you'll notice here is that I didn't set those last two fade cues to stop target one done. So you can see that they're still running. But they finished now. So there's a number of ways you can use a fade cue. Uh, we've also learned how to use a group cue to organise our audio uh, cues together. And also we've learned how to, how to find the different settings within the inspector panel for a different type of cues. So hopefully that will give you something to think about. I'll see you next time.